Hi, my name is Rakesh Sharora. I'm a cardiac surgeon and intensive care medicine specialist at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg in Canada. It's with great pleasure today I provide this very brief overview about targeting delirium in the perioperative patient. Behind me you can see this visual abstract that's been created to kind of target the three major components I want to get across today. One is looking for delirium throughout the surgical journey. Two, if you identify risk, finding ways to mitigate this risk using a mixture of primarily non-pharmacologic and less so pharmacologic strategies to uh, manage patients with perioperative delirium. And three, just saying no to drugs as first line therapy for both the um, uh, mitigation of delirium and also thinking about how to look differently and how we use drugs, specifically opioid drugs, as part of our perioperative pain management strategy. Starting first with the panel on the left about looking for delirium everywhere. Many of our patients coming through for surgery, particularly in a cardiac surgery patient as identified for you here on this slide, have the opportunity for a preoperative evaluation. Using that period of time to identify potential risk factors in your patients such as older age, previous delirium on previous past surgery, or other key risk factors you'll hear throughout this World Delirium Day awareness campaign are important to identify risk. There are several different risk tools out there and identifying one that works best for your busy clinical context will be important. Next, once they've gone through the preoperative phase and had their actual operation, using a systematic delirium screening tool, either in the ICU if your patients go to the ICU or on the post-operative ward are key. Again, there are several different tools out there. I don't advocate for one any specific tool, but rather there's one used by your team as part of your regular vital signs assessment on your patients as frequently as they're done, typically done every shift or more frequently as needed. Lastly, at time of discharge, if you have had a patient with delirium, identifying risk of potential long-term complications to their primary care physician or practitioner is also key as part of the addressing delirium through the entire surgical journey. If you do identify risk in your patient, which now leads us to the middle panel, it's really important to think about how your team will address this particular issue in terms of your way you manage your pain, pain management, as well as mobilization protocols and sleep prevention. Which leads me to the last component of this talk I wanna want address very briefly, is around saying no to drugs as first line therapy. At present, there is no specific medication or drug that will help prevent delirium, and the use of certain medications such as antipsychotics so it really should be reserved for those patients who have severe delirium agitation symptoms postoperatively, where they either pose a risk to themselves, have very distressing symptoms, or potential safety risk to you and your team members. One of the major medications that can elicit or promote delirium in the postoperative patients are the use of narcotics. We have learned through the various enhancing recovery after surgery protocols in various surgical disciplines that increasingly we can get away with effective pain management without the use of opioids. Indeed, the use of opioids can not only cause problems with in-hospital delirium, but to lead to long post-operative uh, persistent opioid use. Identifying pain management needs in the preoperative phase wherever possible is key with preoperative counseling and considering the various other non-opioid alternatives that will promote good pain control and minimize the risk of perioperative delirium. With that, I'd like to stop and thank you very much again for joining us this year at the World Delirium Awareness Day 2022.